how far along he has got, but then we will present the next presentation. Um, first of all, I, I would like to apologize for a little bit of uh, um, overlaps uh, on our presentation. Uh, today I'm uh, going to talk I will talk about uh, scale up and commercialization of code of the quiz process. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the Sergio talked about uh, future projects uh, for commercial uh, plans, and I will um, give you the oops, I'm sorry. I'll give you the bit basics of tutorial synthesis and talk about Rentec history and core technology, and uh, more to. Uh, uh, path forward uh, for commercialization. Fischer Trotz uh, chemistry was developed by Franz Fischer and Hans uh, Trotz uh, before the World War II. In, uh, actually, it was in 1923. And the Fischer Trotz uh, chemistry uh, can be described as in. Uh, uh, using syn gas, hydrogen, hydrogen and carbon monoxide, um, you can convert syn gas to uh, heavy, uh, high molecular weight hydrocarbons using either um, cobalt or iron carbons. Now, um, I would the um, iron carbons mostly produces CO2. That's the uh, biggest uh, significant difference. And uh, during this uh, reaction, water gas reaction takes place. Chain growth was initiated uh, with uh, a species from carbon monoxide on the surface. As soon as methyl uh, alkyl is produced, uh, chain growth continues until it is terminated uh, uh, by hydrogen. Uh, and uh, you get uh, high molecular weight uh, or uh, hydrocarbons. And alpha here uh, represents a chain growth parameter. Before uh, explaining uh, the differences in these catalysts, uh, I would like to uh, explain a couple of things. Fischer-Tropes uh, synthesis falls into two categories, low temperature Fischer-Tropes and high temperature Fischer-Tropes. Low temperature Fischer-Tropes is used to produce a uh, high molecular weight of hydrocarbons, uh, and you can sell it as such or hydrocrack it to diesel fuel. On the other hand, high temperature fissure trough synthesis is used to produce light hydrocarbons to produce uh, gasoline and diesel fuel. So it uh, is, uh, in, for this purpose, uh, iron or cobalt catalyst is used. So they, uh, this is very general characteristics of these catalysts. And uh, to uh, make it clear again, Rentex uses iron catalyst. Iron catalyst uh, is known to have short to long uh, life. Uh, cobalt, on the other hand, has longer life. Iron catalyst is, has lower cost than cobalt catalyst. It is precipitated or fused. On the other hand, cobalt is supported. Hydrogen to CO ratio can be as low as 0.5 and can go up to 2.5. And uh, in general, cobalt is uh, um, good at around uh, hydrogen CO ratio of two. Iron has some sulfur uh, tolerance, low sulfur tolerance. Actually, Bert is going to talk about it at the end of this session. And uh, cobalt uh, doesn't have uh, any sulfur uh, tolerance. Uh, iron is disposable, if, uh, and cobalt needs to be reclaimed for disposal. Iron catalyst uh, produces more olefinic products, hydrocarbons. On the other hand, uh, cobalt uh, produces more paraffinic hydrocarbons. The alpha uh, is, uh, iron catalyst uh, produces low to high alpha products. Uh, this is intermediate to high alpha for cobalt. The only difference I would say here, the significant difference uh, between these two catalysts uh, I would say um, uh, iron produces uh, more CO2. Um, there are uh, two types of uh, reactors used uh, in efficient fuel synthesis, fixed fed reactor and slurry reactor. Um, Rentex uses slurry. 
uh, fixed bed, originally this kind of reactor was um, first practiced in a uh, packed bed uh, reactor uh, uh, during the World War II. And this led to the development of fixed bed reactor uh, to commission uh, argue reactor commissioned at Sasol in 1955. And slurry reactor is easier to work with and it was uh, uh, studied by uh, Kölbel um, during the World War II. Here are the comparisons. Uh, fixed bed reactor is more complex and expensive uh, when it is compared to slurry reactor. Uh, scale up is more difficult uh, mechanically. Um, <coughs> slurry reactor is easier to scale up. Canvas uh, replacement is more difficult. Fixed bed reactor requires um, routine catalyst replacement. Uh, when you do that, uh, that will uh, result in uh, so much uh, reactor downtime and uh, uh, labor. Uh, this is easier uh, uh, with the use of online catalyst removal addition, uh, an addition uh, in a slurry reactor. Uh, there is a uh, temperature gradient across the uh, uh, bed in fixed bed reactor um, because of exothermic reactions, Fischer-Tropsch reactions. This uh, uh, controlling temperature uh, is easier due to churning nature of slurry gas bubble interaction in a slurry reactor. You create better mixing. Uh, you get more like isothermal uh, temperature uh, in, in the reactor. Uh, product selectivity is, uh, it controlling product selectivity in a fixed bed is more difficult with the temperature gradient again. Uh, it's better, uh, easier to control the slurry reactor. And uh, uh, one of the uh, most significant uh, differences is uh, pressure drop. We don't want to have too much pressure drop uh, in a reactor. I mean, there are things that you can overcome in, uh, what is what, uh, in fixed bed reactor. This can be as high as 45 to 100 psi. Um, which is uh, much lower in the slurry reactor. This is a very simplified uh, uh, drawing of uh, fischer tropsch uh, um, Rentex process. Rentex owns only uh, fischer tropsch uh, technology. Uh, up uh, here, uh, gasification, uh, gas cleanup, downstream product upgrading uh, is uh, uh, done by other companies uh, working with Rentec. Basically, uh, using carbon-bearing feedstocks, natural gas, coal, refined uh, new products, industrial off-gas or biomass, we can produce uh, synthesis gas. Using synthesis gas, uh, uh, fischer uh, uh, synthesis, uh, with, uh, using uh, fischer synthesis process, can uh, produce hydrocarbons. Uh, the Products can be in a wide range. It can be wax, it can be diesel, it can be naphtha, uh, gasoline. But uh, in this, uh, our technology uh, is aiming for, um, at the moment, uh, for diesel. And what is uh, beautiful about our technology is, you know, we can use any feedstock. It's very flexible. Um, Rentec uh, was, for people who uh, probably uh, haven't heard before, Rentec was founded in 1981 uh, by Chuck Venom, uh, Dennis Jacobson, and Mark Bond. Um, and uh, uh, Rentec is uh, their own patented and proprietary technology uh, using iron-based catalysts and slurry bubble column reactor. These are uh, some of the examples of uh, pilot plant uh, operations. Rentec has extensive experience in operating pilot plants and Sennheitec commercial uh, demonstration plant. And uh, next, uh, it will be a uh, process demonstration unit in Denver, Colorado. Stir the uh, pilot plant, first pilot plant uh, <coughs> built in Sterling was, the, uh, uh, was uh, built in 1982. And Zoom and I, uh, pilot plant was uh, built to acquire for market uh, studies and uh, product um, upgrading. The third generation of pilot plant was built in uh, uh, Pueblo. And uh, uh, Senhai Tech uh, was uh, built together with Fuelco 
it, the whole uh, purpose was to use the landfill, but uh, after a few year, couple of years, landfill um, ran out, so we couldn't continue to run this. And the, uh, another pilot plant experience is Laporte together with um, uh, Texaco. And here some pictures of those pilot plants. Sterling and uh, pilot plant were operated until 85. Uh, Zunai uh, pilot plant uh, was uh, uh, operated for a few years. Um, and uh, this is actually the first one was, the, this is Pueblo pilot plant at the same time. It was uh, built in early 1990 and uh, moved to Denver, Colorado in 1998. We still uh, use this uh, bomb column reactor at our technology development center. This is a uh, high tech plant. Um, this is, I uh, believe, still the largest FT slurry reactor in the world outside uh, South Africa. Um, process scale up. Um, it's uh, generally accepted that uh, the uh, design of commercial size reactor um, cannot be accomplished just by purely uh, theoretical approach. To start with, uh, lab uh, and pilot uh, plant data must be available. And uh, you cannot just increase the diameter and the height of the reactor and say, okay, it's scaled up, let's go uh, do it. You cannot do this. Uh, to do this uh, uh, more successfully, you need to increase the size stepwise uh, with the goal, uh, with, the, uh, with the desired uh, commercial uh, size uh, as the goal. And uh, during that uh, stage, you need to look at, uh, uh, there are so many things you need to look at. Uh, kinetic study, uh, reactor design, <coughs> modeling simulation, uh, gas holdup. Uh, uh, those uh, studies need to be revisited to make sure that next step is going to work. We have been working on catalyst of act separation, uh, not only just using the separation unit, we are also uh, paying attention to catalyst uh, characterization and uh, manufacturing. How about uh, catalyst scale-up? Now, uh, now I, I put the first item here uh, first experience. Kitratek has quite a bit of experience in chemical scale up and don't smile when I say, uh, to, to, when I talk about 20 pounds of uh, rent tech used using Zoomite. This was a very small scale of pilot plant, number one, uh, and it was very beginning. It uh, was in 1981 uh, 82. So the second batch uh, was uh, produced, uh, 22 pounds of, uh, uh, pounds of canvas was produced to support a high tech plant. And this CAMS was used for 60 day test in 1993. Uh, the, the test, a uh, uh, thousand pounds of uh, CAMS was used to support uh, Laporte test um, in uh, Tex uh, Texas, uh, together with Texaco. And these catalysts have been used, still being used at Trentec uh, in BCR or uh, CCR tests. And now we are in the process of uh, manufacturing uh, catalysts for the PDU product uh, process uh, demonstration unit. And we are also working uh, on this to uh, support our uh, future commercial plans. Uh, we are looking on different things, uh, looking at different things, how to improve the catalyst. It's a constant uh, ongoing study. And how about uh, scaling up people? Um, this is the hardest part. Uh, in 1981, when uh, Chuck uh, Dennis and Mark started, they were doing everything. And they have been very conservative in uh, uh, hiring people. Uh, they, uh, because of the oil price, I don't know if you uh, uh, attended the plenary session yesterday. Uh, today, it's a good news. Uh, one of the audience was uh, asking how long this can go. Their uh, uh, estimation predicts uh, the oil price from $59 to $100 in the next 20 years. So it's a good news. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's a good news. For, uh, good news. Um, most difficult part in scaling up people is material. 
How are you going to find qualified uh, people? Uh, when I start to uh, study um, cold liquefaction, there were uh, so many people and they retired. Those peers are not out there anymore. And the younger generation, they just smile, give a smirky smile, oh, cold study? No, I won't do that. Uh, but now we don't have so many people to find in the future trip synthesis experience. Uh, so you need to uh, do your job the best so uh, you interview a lot of people every day. This uh, comes with free lunch associated with weight gain. Uh, you know what? You don't want to scale. You don't, this, this is not what you're talking about. Uh, and uh, to today, um, Things are going really well. Uh, we had about three people, three PhDs in R&D, including myself. Now we have more than 20 people. Uh, the project, engineering and construction, we didn't have anybody. Now we have more than 40 people. It's uh, growing really fast. So when you have so many people aboard, how are you going to create a good team um, to work all together uh, all the time? That's really difficult. But I take this as um, every individual is like a catalyst. You put them into a reactor and then uh, test them for uh, performance. And it's, uh, so far, I think we have done a good job. Uh, uh, we are working really well. Yes, we, we are going to have some gaps, uh, but if we are going to have, we are going to overcome the, these issues very soon. Um, here, I will, although you saw some of those uh, uh, pictures in uh, Sergio's uh, presentation, I will show it again. Uh, uh, I didn't realize we were overlapping that much. This is the propo uh, proposed site uh, for uh, uh, Technology Development Center. This used to be a uh, methanol plant. Some of the units are, uh, de were demolished. And uh, this part is going to be total uh, lab and office area. Uh, this is actually when you see architectural drawing, uh, coal comes here, go to crasher, go to gasifier. After uh, uh, extensive <coughs> gas cleanup procedure, uh, syngas is uh, sent to slurry bubble column reactor and then uh, uh, upgrading the uh, product upgrading units here. This is uh, one of the latest pictures. This, is, this was taken when the gasifier was uh, being delivered. It was a very beautiful sunny day in Colorado. And you see, the, uh, the, in this picture, you see the uh, product upgrading units uh, more clearly. <coughs> this is com almost completed. And this is, uh, be very soon, we are going to uh, get the PDU as well on the site. Now, I think uh, that's all I can talk about now. Uh, but uh, all I can say, Rentec has experience in CTL process since 1981. Um, we, uh, to support uh, future projects, uh, we need to expand our lab uh, facilities. We uh, are installing more auto place fixed bed reactors. We already purchased so many uh, equipments to uh, uh, support uh, catalyst development uh, and uh, slurry bubble column uh, reactor studies. Um, uh, this uh, PDU, as Sergio mentioned, is going to start in uh, uh, early September 2007 or uh, late August. We are still hiring more people, and uh, uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm one of the old timers, they say, although I'm not that old. Uh, I can tell uh, the difference already. Uh, change is very, very good, very challenging. Um, I think we are uh, already uh, building a very good team, and uh, we are going to have some unforeseen uh, problems, but don't be all. Uh, so I, I believe those are taking a uh, very challenging, solvable problem too. Um, that's all I can say at the moment if you have questions. Fisher Trokes aspect. 
And it seems to me if you couple that with without a specific gasifier, you're trying to scale up two things. I mean, you have to scale up the gasifier, and you have to scale up then the fissure tropes working off the synthesis gas. Is that is that anticipated to be a difficulty? I, I assume you're just looking at a generic gasifier. Uh, gasifier gasification technology is pretty much mature these days. Uh, uh, you can uh, for the PDU system also it's pretty difficult. Uh, we have to use one of the small uh, size uh, gasifiers, but for commercial case it's available. So it, that part is not uh, uh, going to be a problem, but uh, scaling up uh, fissure troops reactor uh, needs to be studied really well. For for Rentec, I mean we uh, we have small size uh, uh, solar reactor experience, but we don't have commercial uh, size. Actually, the problem we had is to scale down the gasifier. Um, for the PDU, yeah. 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 you, you can get gasifiers at, uh, for 10,000 bars a day uh, FT yeah. plan easily, but it's not very easy to get a 30 tons a day gasifier. Yeah, yeah the put, uh, production rate for PDU is 10 to 15 barrels per day. I mean, what gets gas? There are not many gasifiers out there to support the. Uh, and uh, this size fissure troops uh, react. Just to add to that topic, you know, but I, uh, possibly the gentleman's point is, uh, you know, you're, for example, uh, using a scaled down conchophilus gasifier or some such thing. Uh, different gasifiers give you slightly different streams, product streams. And so if you use that versus shell, then Rantec fissure troops will be, from a commercial point of view, tied in with the conchophilus one just because all of your data will be that particular oh, yeah. mixture of syngas coming in. Yeah, that, that's what I was getting Different syngas combinations. Different temperatures that they run at for acid gas removal, different ways of disposing of the ash. This seemed to compound the <coughs> difficulties. Yeah, those are uh, it's, it's, upstream of... It's uh, true, it's, it's true, but the, uh, the good part of it, the narrow catalyst is that it's very flexible for the wide yeah. range of hydrogen to CO ratio and basically the end product of a gasifier is a syngas mixture that will have different hydrogen to fuel ratio depending on the gasifier. So that's one reason to stick with the iron instead of a, a coal. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. I have a question about the, the linear velocity inside the slurry bubble column that you showed. If you can go back to that slide. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, 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 the well, table yeah, with the numbers. You show the different, like, oh, okay. different reactors and different linear velocities. I, yeah, that's why I was, because I like, didn't think that I uh, present any data, so I said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, sure. So the superficial velocity, you mean uh, uh, the, the velocity of the gas or of the liquid? Mm -hmm. That's the gas. Yes. The gas. Wanna, yeah. This yes. reactor operates at a very low space, uh, uh, superficial gas velocity. The commercial reactor uh, should work at much higher than those. Uh, when the sizes are there, at, I mean, at least you know higher than 10 centimeters per second, because you want to be in the churn turbulent regime for the solar bubble column. And the only way to do that is go above 10 centimeters per second when your diameter is uh, 50. And, uh, and uh, do you think uh, you, will, uh, you will have to face some problems uh, uh, about the mechanical resistance of the catalyst when going to, to a higher linear velocity, or you think? Uh, we already yes. started studying that. We are looking into, um, uh, well, it might be, but we, we know what we are going to do, so uh, it's not going to be a problem. So you solved the problem of mechanical uh, We're work, working on it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, but uh, uh, because the problem is that uh, uh, is to have a tool to, to subject the, 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 the catalyst to the true linear velocity of the big plan. I mean, I, I don't know if I have been clear. I mean, uh, uh, in, uh, in your small plants, uh, you have uh, some linear velocity, say, five centimeters per second like this. 
Mm -hmm. And you test your cattle is there. Mm -hmm. But in the big plant, you have higher. Yeah. But how to test uh, if the cattle is with a higher linear velocity, except then in the big plant? But the reactor diameter of the TDU uh, pan uh, will allow us to test the uh, linear velocities uh, in the same range as the commercial pan. <coughs> We, we will be working in the same range of uh, superficial gas velocity as in the commercial track. Well, yeah, also, uh, the, 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 there are a number of shortcuts. For example, the, the, the CSDR environment typically is a lot harsher than the global column environment. So if you make your tablets, put it in a CSDR and test it, uh, you, will, uh, you, know, you will bracket the truth in terms of a very harsh environment versus the lower linear velocity. Yes. I was curious to know um, what is the CO conversion level you can use in this uh, black diameter in the, in the superficial space? It's, it's uh, quite high. Uh, I can give you a number, but it's, uh, it's good. Iron catalyst is a uh, uh, retex uh, fish uh, iron catalyst, is very active and it also has very high uh, water gas shift activity. The only problem is, you know, again, CO2. But uh, we are working on utilization of CO2, conversion of CO2. We already started studying that. If we have further questions, let's start speaking. <laughs> My name is Isaac Rahamim. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'll <laughs> I thought Bert was going to continue to be uh, but I'm sorry. Uh, Isaac Rahamim is uh, our next speaker, and as you see. <laughs> <laughs> the topics of.